Fellowship Encouragement Series with Pastor Henry Harley. The theme for today is Making It Somehow Even on Broken Pieces. Throughout our lives, we have all experienced storms that have affected us in numerous ways. Storms are usually sudden, they take us by surprise, they test our faith, they fill our hearts with fear and anxiety and cause us to believe that Jesus has forgotten us. However, one thing we know for sure about storms is that they will never last forever. So when we feel overwhelmed by the winds and the waves that batter our lives, let us not forget to call on Jesus, knowing confidently that he will show up. For we know that when Jesus shows up, he can speak stillness to our storms. And should we endure these storms, he will strengthen us, he will restore us, and he will empower us. And despite being battered and bruised or even broken, much like the sailor who clings to the pieces of his broken ship until he swims ashore, we too can cling on our hope in Jesus and we will make it through somehow even on broken pieces. We now call on the praise and worship team.
the hope and the assurance that we have as believers, you know, that no matter what we are facing today, no matter what COVID brings, we are reminded that because Jesus lives, because we trust in him, because we believe on his promises and on his word, no matter what tomorrow brings, we know that we can face it as long as we have Christ with us. Our scripture reading is taken from Acts 27, verse 9 to 25, and verses 41 to 44. So Acts 27, verses 9 to 25, and verses 41 to 44. Much time had been lost. And sailing had already become dangerous because now it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter, to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed the lee of a small island called Corda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars of Sirtis. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Verse 41 to 44. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move. And the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planning to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to, to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Here is the reading of God's holy word. We now invite Pastor Henry Harley to come and share the word of encouragement that he has for you today. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Greetings.
greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. So good to be with you today and giving God thanks for our spared life. And also thanking God for all of you who have joined us today. We give God thanks for you. We know the circumstances that we're in. We know the situation we face. And we note that God is still a good God. That he is still providing for us. And so we give him thanks. And the privilege is ours to worship him still. And for you to join in our worship today. As we continue these encouragement series. We hope that the Lord will inspire his word to our heart and that you will find encouragement. Today the theme, making it somehow, Amen. Amen. even on broken pieces, yes, making it somehow, somehow. hallelujah, even on, pieces, even on broken pieces, even on broken pieces, oh, yes. Yes. making it, make that's it the story, we need to he make it. Amen. 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 And that's the encouragement I'm saying to you. You need to Amen. make it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles, a Jewish rabbi, zealous for God, zealous for Israel, zealous for Judaism. The Apostle Paul was converted miraculously and dramatically. He was converted to Christianity on his way to Damascus. He was on a journey to persecute Christians. God met him, Jesus met him, and his life was changed forever. Glory to God. Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, preached powerfully and uncompromisingly. He preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes. But not only the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he preached that Jesus came to give eternal life to whosoever will. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. So the hope of eternal life, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, the very one he was persecuting Christians for believing, he began to preach powerfully about Jesus. So much so that Paul was persecuted for the gospel. He was charged and then he was being tried. And in his trial before Festus and Festus and Felix and Agrippa, Paul made a request, an appeal to go to Caesar. And so he is placed on the guard. He's placed under watch and he's put in a ship to go to Italy. We have the account of this eventful journey in our scripture reading. We have selected sections of this for the encouragement today. And I want to make some observations from this journey, this eventful journey, and to share some lessons with you. Now, I want you to understand that in the ordinary course of our lives, in the ordinary course of our mission and our purpose, yes. we are likely to encounter difficulties. Right. We're likely to encounter yes. danger. Yes. We, we are even likely to encounter destruction. Yes. That, that is a natural part of our journey. Yes. And so we have in the journey of a child of God, the Apostle Paul, an encounter with danger and difficulty. Yes. And the difference is how we deal with those. Yes. It's how we deal with those difficulties and dangers that make a difference. Yes. And I am putting it to you that you can make it. Amen. We can Amen. make it. Amen. Yes, 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 we can Amen. make it. Amen. So let us look at the scriptures for some lessons. In verse 9, we find... The Apostle Paul, essentially, before the journey started, saying, this is a dangerous journey. Yes. 
Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, verse 10, I, per I perceive that this voyage will be hurt and much damage, not only of the leading and ship, but also of our lives. Life itself Amen. was threatened yes. on this journey. Yes, he had made an appeal. He was on his way to see Caesar, but there was danger on the way. And I want to put it to you that in our current situation, in Jamaica, right across the world, our journey in life at this point in time is a dangerous journey. Yes, sir. Our journey in life at this point in time is a dangerous and destructive journey. We note the pandemic, coronavirus, COVID idea, whatever it is, that is wreaking havoc and is a danger to all of us. Yes, all of us who are alive are in danger of this. And the thing is, there is not a lot we can do. We can do something, but there are other things that we cannot do. Like the Apostle Paul, he was a prisoner. He was on a ship. There was not much he could do. He, however, had to learn that in life, the way we deal with dangers and difficulty, that can make a difference. And so he said, a lot of hurt, a lot of damage, a lot of loss will occur, and even lives will be lost. I don't need to tell you in the current situation that we are facing, a lot is being lost. Economically, a lot is being lost. Relationally, a lot is being lost. Emotionally, a lot is being lost. A lot is being lost financially. A lot is being lost in terms of loved ones. We know this, we see this, we hear the news. And so the idea here is that when the Apostle Paul saw that danger was coming, he warned people. He said there is going to be hurt. And now we need to be realistic and say, in this pandemic, there's going to be hurt. In this pandemic, there's going to be destruction. Yes. In this pandemic, there already is death. Oh, but there is good news. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 21 to 23 of the scripture reading gives us some indication here. It says, but after long abstinence, yes. Paul stood forth yes. in the midst of them and said, sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer, yes. for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Praise the name of the Lord. I find this a wonderful assurance. I find this a word in time of need. I find this a word that is unique and special. I find it strange indeed that at a time when there is a warning of destruction and loss, we find here the Apostle Paul saying, be of good cheer, Amen. for there shall be no loss of man's life. I find that strange that he is a prisoner on board a ship, has no control over things, but he's telling people, to be of good cheer. I wonder how one could be in a situation like that and you're giving people cheer and telling them to be cheerful. You're a prisoner. You don't have no talk. You don't have no mouth. But you see, he knew who he trusted. Hallelujah. He knew who he trusted and therefore he could say, in spite of destruction, in spite of damage, in spite of death, he said, be of good cheer. And here is why he could say that. Verse 23. For there stood by me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This night, yes. the angel of God, yes. whose I am Amen. and who I serve. Yes. Hallelujah. Saying, fear not, Paul. Fear not, Paul. Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. And lo, God hath given thee all of them 
that sail with thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In time of distress, in time of trouble, in time of need, God showed up. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm saying in time of trouble, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of damage, in the midst of destruction, in the midst of danger, God showed up. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. He showed up. Hallelujah. He showed up. In our current situation, I am declaring, God will show up. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Destruction is all around. Danger is all around. But God, hallelujah, will show up. And when he shows up, he comes with assurance. He gives assurance. And if there's ever a time we need assurance, it is now. When we are faced with danger on every hand, if there's a time we need to have assurance, is now. Now I want you to notice carefully in the circumstances that God didn't show up to everybody. And God didn't show up for everybody yes. in a way that they could see. Yes. But he showed up nonetheless. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Paul, a little prisoner, yes. a man maybe of insignificance on the ship in the scheme of things, Paul was just another piece of cargo. Jesus. Amen. The ship was not sailing for Paul's benefit. Yes. They had cargo, they had valuables on the ship. And maybe Paul was not so valuable to them. But notice, because he served the true and living God, because he was a child of God, God showed up to him. And when God showed up to Paul, I want you to notice that when he showed up to Paul, it was for the benefit of all. Hallelujah. So God never had to show up to everybody individually. He showed up to Paul with a word that was beneficial for all. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. In a time of difficulty, God will show up with a word to one person. But it is for the benefit of everybody. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And so the word was, yes, trouble is on the sea. Yes, the ship is in trouble. Yes, our life is in danger. But be of good cheer. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Be of good cheer. Now imagine in that situation, we are encouraged and assured that we must be of good cheer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a chorus that says, Hallelujah. Anyhow, glory to God. Never let your problems get you down. When temptation come your way, lift your hand up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow, hallelujah. Anyhow, it may not come out when, like the time when we're excited and everything, but it needs to come out. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. It needs to come out. Be of good cheer. In our, country, in our situation, God will show up. And when God shows up, He's going to give assurance. And we need that assurance right now. What is the assurance that we need? We need the assurance that we will make it. Hallelujah. We will make it. Hallelujah. We will make it. The assurance God is giving. Keep trusting. Keep trusting. The assurance God wants to give you. Stay on board the ship. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't jump ship. Don't panic and give up. Stay aboard the ship. If you stay aboard the ship, you will make it. Hallelujah. You will make it. If you stay aboard the ship, don't jump ship. What ship I'm talking about? The ship of your faith in God. The ship of your trust in God. The ship of your belief in God. Don't give up. No matter what is happening. Destruction around you. A thousand at your right hand, ten thousand falling down around you. Yes. Don't give up. 
Hallelujah. You can make it. We are going to make it. And Paul was told, he did not see the outcome yet, but he was told, I am going to give you all of the people aboard the ship. You yes. know how many people are on the ship? About 270 of them. And God says, listen, I don't know where they, where they come from. They may not be serving me, yes. but for my name's sake, yes. and for you, my child, yes. I'm going to make sure that no life is lost be of good cheer. Amen. Praise God. Look at the storm. Look at the difficulty. Look at the problem. Look at the stress. Look at the stream. And say, be of good cheer. Child of God. Amen. Glory to Amen. Child of God. Child of God. Child of God. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. The words of the psalmist come to mind. Lift up your head. Don't hold down your head. All ye gates. Lift up your head. All ye gates. And be he lifted up. The everlasting doors. The king of glory. King of glory. Shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Lord strong and mighty. Hallelujah. Lord mighty in battle. Coronavirus has been declared as a war against humanity. The Lord mighty in battle is saying, lift up your head. Hallelujah. Go in gates and be it lifted up the everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Lord of hosts. Glory to God. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Paul was told, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. And then as we continue in this selection here in Acts 27, we notice that the ship ran aground. <laughs> yeah, verse 41, the ship ran aground. And it says here, falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the four parts stuck fast and the remainder unmovable. But the inner part was broken with the violence of the wave. Yes. Ship mash up, yes. everything crashed. Yes. <laughs> God had given assurance, yes. but everything crashed still. Yes. Yes. Now, when God gives you an assurance, hold on to it. Yes. Even if everything is crashing around yes. you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Everything is being damaged around you. Hold on to the assurance that you have from God. Yes. So the ship run aground. Ship mash up. Yes. yes, yes. And when it mash up and everything crash, what we notice in the word of God here, it says, and the soldier's counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should escape or swim out and escape. And, but the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose. So somebody said, listen up, the way things are, might as well we give up. Might as well we kill off everybody. Let me tell you something. In my spirit, something just come to me and said, listen, I rebuke the spirit of suicide and the spirit of giving up and the spirit of murder that is out there right now, roaming Overing over people who are panicking because things are going wrong. I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and declare you will make it. Hallelujah. You will make it, child of God. Child of God. Whatever the threat is over your life, you will make it. You will make it. We praise the name of the Lord. We notice in this verse here and the rest of and the rest of the people, it says here, but the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped Amen. safely to land. Praise the name of the Lord. Out of destruction, out of all kind of danger, they all made it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 
They made it. They made it. They made it. Praise the name of Jesus. Now let me tell you something as I close here. When you stand on the word of God, you will make it. Yeah, when you take the assurance that you get from God's word, you will make it. Not because we are saying it, because God says it. That settles it. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And nobody can change it. When we believe God and trust in assurance we have from his word, we will make it. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something else. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how you look when you make it. Yes. Whether you're battered or tattered yes. or tired yes. or weary, it don't matter. Doesn't what matter. really matters that is that you made it. Yes. Glory Amen. to God. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why it's important that you made it. That you made it battered and tattered. Some writers say, though my ship may be battered and my sails are torn. Today I challenge you. Stand on the word of God. Take this encouragement as assurance from God today. Take it that God wants you to believe and trust in him and take his word as a guarantee that he will do what he says. Take this as assurance. You will make it. You can make it. Listen to the word of God. Hold on to your faith. Trust in him with all your heart. And even if you are having to grab on to broken pieces, hold on to it for you will make it. We are going to make it through this church of God. Amen. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. We're going to make it through this. Yes. We're going to make it to the other side. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not by might. Yes. Not by power. Yes. But by the spirit of Almighty God. Yes. I stand here today to give you assurance. From the word of God. From the life of a servant of God. Who was ongoing. Who was going through adversity. But even though he was going through adversity, God showed up Amen. in our adversity. Know that God himself will show up. Amen. Know that when he shows up, he gives assurance. Yes. And when he gives assurance, don't be afraid to cheer up. Yes. Live in the sunshine. Amen. We don't understand all of it now, yes. but we need to cheer up. Yes. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Yes, it may be hard. It may not be good and wonderful times. But take this. If we abide in the ship. If we trust in him with all our heart. And lean on to our own understanding. We will make it. And even if it is broken pieces. We are going to make it. By the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Blessed be his name. Thank you for assurance. Thank you for your word. We stand on your word today, oh God. We stand on your word today. We believe your word. We are going to make it. Not by mind. Not by power. But by the spirit of almighty God. God bless you. In Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Today we stand on the word of God. Amen. We will make it. Amen. We will Jesus. make it. Amen. We will make it. Oh, we may Thank not understand, Jesus. but we Thank will make Jesus. it. Yes, With praise God on our side, Amen. we will make praise it. Praise your name, Jesus. Oh, he knows Let's the way. Be your holy name, Lord. He's praise the way. Yeah. Your name, Jesus. And he praise promised us today Jesus. in his word. We will Praise make it. God. I invite you all to bow your heads to humble your heart before the Lord today. As we approach his throne of mercy. Our God, our Father, eternal King, you are great and mighty. You are strong. 
You are powerful. Yes, Lord. You are the giver of life. Yes. All good gifts around us come from heaven above. Yes, Lord. And today we thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We celebrate you. Yes, Jesus. Oh, a few months ago, we didn't see this coming. Oh, we were sailing on quite nicely yes. with all our plans. Yes. Oh, but God, we know who nothing takes you by surprise. And you have prepared a way for us. Oh, God, you have made a way of escape for us. We are not just good times believers, but we serve you. Oh, we serve you even when we are in the valley, in the shadow of death. We fear no evil, for thou art with us. Oh, your rod and your staff will comfort us. In the face of our enemies, oh, you anoint our heads, your oil. And so we glorify you today. We magnify you. Many are troubled. Many have lost their source of income. Yes. They are wondering how they are going to survive. Lord. But Lord, even when it looks dark, even as the scripture says today, on broken pieces, yes. oh, you still know the way. Yes. You are still the way maker. Yes. And so we commit those to you who are worried today. Who are feeling depressed. Yeah. Who are wondering what next. There is hope in King Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, there is a way in King Jesus. Amen. And we Amen. trust you today. We rebuke the spirit. Yes. Oh, that wants to hold us captive. Yes. In a state of depression. Yes. In suicidal mode. Yes. We Jesus. rebuke that today. In the name of Jesus. And we magnify you. Jesus. As believers, we want to say it is an opportune time for us yes, to build, build intimacy with you. Yes. Oh, for in the valley, you restore our soul. You draw us aside. And in our testing and our trials, you will teach us how to trust you and not to lean on our own understanding. Bless your name today, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you. Worship. And we pray for the believers all over the world today. We pray that it will be a time of reconnection with yes, you. Lord. Yes, Lord. It will be a time of renewal. Yes. And that our hope will be built on nothing less. Yes. But in the word of God. Yes. For we as believers, we know that one day you're coming back. And this world will be changed. And so we don't want to get too comfortable here. We want to be reminded daily that we are pilgrims. Amen. So we trust in God. Whatever may come our way, we trust in God. And we thank you for your word today. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. And we pray for sick persons today. We pray for healing. Healing in the body, yes. healing in the mind, yes. oh, healing in finances, yes, oh, whatever is causing concern and is a problem right now, we present to you. Thank you, Lord, for you will hear Lord. our prayers. We pray for our country. Yes. We pray for those on the front line. Yes. And Lord, we pray you will cover them. Oh, cover them, Lord. Cover them, Lord. Oh, you know how to preserve lives. Yes, so we pray that you will preserve. Yes, Lord. Even in the face of danger. Yes. Even when it seems dark and gloomy yes, and hopeless. Yes, we pray because you can shine through. And you can come through for us. We magnify you today. And we pray that your presence will continue to fill our lives. And that we'll never lose hope but that we will seek to be connected to you. Yes, Lord. For you have a word for us even in this difficult time. Yes, Lord. And your word today is that we should hold on. Amen. 
never lose hope. We thank you. Be magnified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And tell you thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let me say what a joy it has been to be able to share with you today this word, this important word, this encouraging word, this word of assurance that we're going to make it. And we're going to make it somehow. Now there are some of you who cannot swim, but don't give up. Amen. Your own abilities is not what is going to determine whether you make it now. It is that God will provide a plank for you. God will provide a, a piece of floating board for you in the sea of damage and destruction and rubble. He will provide something for you that will take you safely ashore. And indeed, the other side, the shore we look forward to is the shore of the eternal kingdom of God. And that is the most important. We trust that God will bless you. So, once again, from us here at Church of God's Seventh-day Ebenezer Fellowship, we thank you. We are giving God glory and honor in spite of the challenges. And we pray that he will bless you. We look forward to your company next time. May the Lord bless you. See you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God.